Hey Dion, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. It's an indigenous story uh, work methodology by Joanne Archibald from 2008. And basically this person who is a Coast Salish person from BC, that's also an educator that values the power of story to educate and heal, is also somebody that's been learning from elders for over 30 years. So basically this article is going to highlight um, some of the important understandings they've learned from elders about indigenous story work um, methodology. So that's basically the topic of this entire um, article. So this person says that through elders they've gained insight into traditional ecological and cultural uh, knowledges as well as lived experience. And through this that they've come to learn the seven uh, principles of story work, which are um, respect, responsibility, reverence, reciprocity, holism, um, interrelatedness, and synergy. And the four, first four R's are um, traditional like teachings that are demonstrated through the story and the, and the storyteller and the listener and practiced in story work context. So this basic, basically this article talks all about, um, she goes through meetings with elders and talks about how she's um, almost reiterated these four R's. So, and that the other three shape the learning process itself. So holism um, comprises the spiritual, emotional, and physical, and intellectual domains of human development, as well as the relationships between the self and the community and um, the wider world and environment. So, and basically that effective um, story work methodology that, trend, that has a transformative um, experience um, works within <clears throat> these seven principles. It's also... Um, an indigenous uh, research methodology and um, to highlight that she brings forth uh, the character the trickster and talks about um, coyote um, with his bone needle and so she relates this to a research methodology for improving indigenous education or finding an appropriate uh, research method meaning that we may have to go back to knowledge territories that are established by ancestors to gain um, clear insight into modern day educational context and says that maybe um, the bone needle symbolized something that could be used as a research tool. So um, a lot of it is this idea of this uh, back and forth nature um, and, and the author talks about that later on about um, hands back and, and hands forward. So um, from the future, um, the past and the present and the effectiveness of that when it comes to indigenous research. And um, so anyway, this, this whole idea got um, the author thinking about research itself and its benefits and challenged um, themselves to find a culturally relevant way to carry out the inquiry, um, just to make space for um, indigenous knowledge and methodology in the academy. So this is when they get into the whole thing with the elders and they start to realize that um, they don't have to sort of have these Eurocentric methods of, of research. There, there's also other ways, and, and they actually explain um, <clears throat> that they taught they uh, basically turn off the tape recorder and stop taking the notes, and um, maybe go back afterwards and and after some insight, think about what was important and what they said. So, but anyway. Um, so, okay, so this person is looking for um, ways to research that are respectful, um, that follow along with the four R's, and there's, and she says, like, there's been a legacy of disrespectful um, research methodologies that, that still looms over Indigenous communities, and it makes people sort of, like, protective of their knowledge, right? So, <coughs> so this person talks about um, knowledge being for good use and that there's a respect and responsibility that's an integral part um, between the relationship between the elder and the research and there's a trust that has to be built there um, and a respect and re responsibility for cultural protocols and honoring the authority and the expertise of the teacher and it talks about fundamental sources of knowledge is the land spiritual beliefs ceremonies traditional teaching of elders and lived experiences 
So, so basically they come, they, as I was saying, that they, they leave the, the way of research that they've known and they talk about research as chat, they talk about um, research as storytelling, and, and so when they stop taking, using these processes that they know, they talk about oral and heart memory and that they take these sort of notes after the um, discussion. That, that was a pretty interesting um, part of it for me. So, and this, this actually made me think of my own um, inability at times to recall or, or remember. And the fact that I require like this script, for instance, to articulate all of my thoughts about this reading. Um, I know there's a certain aspect of this that because of my past history with trauma, uh, but I also wonder if there's an aspect of that that's directly related to our, our society being so forward and so um, based in the now and, and consumption based. Um, the article <clears throat> talks about uh, this approach of hands back and forward and the responsibility that's in that. And I feel that there's a lot less uh, responsibility in our current uh, Eurocentric way of knowing. So that seems to, um, this method of teaching, for instance, um, learning pieces at a time, um, that kind of made me think about uh, the importance to being able to recall those sort of uh, things and that maybe it's not all about um, taking in all of the information at once, but those, you know, maybe we just need to have a little more patience to, um, and think about those sort of things. Think about how our, our ways of knowing are so forward. Um, and what, and how does that benefit us? Like there's no real responsibility there. So, um, so anyway, the author, uh, talked a lot about responsibility, but if you consider this as a method of learning, um, it's also about establishing of relationships within the story work uh, research context. And, and I guess that's another thing that's sort of in, in Eurocentric ways of knowing is that, that it wouldn't really require any relationship um, before that knowledge is just um, extracted. So the author says this is a, a way of sustaining lasting friendships and there's also a responsibility of cooperative research and storytelling. And to me, honestly, I think that that's a much better uh, way of um, gathering knowledge and with more responsibility. And I also didn't know that there was uh, so much um, regarding like the four R's in story work. Um, I didn't know that um, it could be used as a, a research methodology. And I'm interested in putting that forward, um, but also I'm, I'm so disconnected that I feel like the four R's are almost out of reach for me. Um, and I guess this goes back to the whole idea about maybe having elders, access to elders and, and access to that knowledge because there's such a divide between us um, mixed, mixed people, um, mixed indigenous people to um, say people living in the community. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely a disconnect there, and and I think that that's pretty much all I get to say to you. I mean, we could talk about this forever, buddy, but you know we got other things we got to do today. So um, yeah, so anyway, that's my info about that, and I'm gonna load that up now, and uh, we can be done with that for this week. And I guess I'll see you next week.